Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're taking a look at Jack Move on the Nintendo Switch. This one is a cyberpunk JRPG with a modernized pixel style, but is it worth your time and cash? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about, so hit subscribe. Join us here for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. Before we do get into this today, then if you are considering picking up this game or something else from the eShop, consider using cornershop.gg for your eShop credit. You'll get 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. Story then, and while I presumed that Jack Move was a character in this world, it's in fact not the case and references special abilities. Our lead instead goes by the name of Noah, and she works alongside her friend Ryder to conduct, let's say, illegal work like hacking or breaking and entering so they can keep the bills paid and life ticking along. While it's not the most noble of work either, we definitely have some ethical standards in place like targeting major corporations only. Before we know it though, in this cyberpunk world, things will quickly escalate. Everything from murder to tales about our estranged father to a corporation by the name of Monomind that are definitely interested in your family. What follows then is a whole host of twists, turns and characters with evil intentions. Definitely decent stuff, I like the world a lot, there's more than a few characters to interact with. The side quests in here and then the supporting team members too, such as your uncle who owns a local bar and they add for a nice kind of diversion in the narrative. I wouldn't say it's a complicated story either, but it definitely kept my attention throughout with some good writing and just generally likeable personalities. My only real issue is occasionally a little too much can be going on at once, as it kind of decides what narrative to pay most attention to, and then it is a short game as genre entries go, which we'll be getting into in gameplay. Gameplay then and what we have is a relatively traditional turn-based JRPG. It's a game of exploration, random combat encounters, dialogue exchanges and then of course party setup. That said though it does enough here to differentiate itself and stand out. For example, there's no party members here, just a Noah. Our special moves known as Jack moves, they require short quick time offense, you know directional inputs and overall again as I said it is a short. It took me around eight hours to complete the story and I'd say I did maybe half of the side quests packed in. One thing I didn't like immediately though, when you do enter the final section of the game it flashes a warning to you, be level 21 or expect a grind, there is no going back. Now that is fine but on completion I was hoping I could jump back in and wrap up the side quest, that is not the case so do make sure you wrap up everything first. The controls then are simplistic throughout movement with the joystick or the D-pad and interact button and then the ability to access a couple of menus, one being a simple pause state, the other setting up a number of parameters around Noah. So onto the combat then, it's a fun time, easy to understand, we have a basic attack, special moves, a super special, all of that jack move and items that we can leverage, such as health packs and buffers, all actions and they do cost points, here known as data points, though I will add I rarely ran out. Likewise in the lower left of the screen then you'll also see the JM meter, that's your jack move build up and it's going to be rolling over from fight to fight. You build Build this up by simply delivering attacks. The rollover then also includes the data point state and your health meter state. This game will not replenish it for you. You can however do that from things such as vending machines in the world or with items and skills from the inventory menu mid-level. Victory in battle though it leads to items and XP, the latter impacts everything from strength to skill to defense as is kind of pretty standard for the genre. I did note as well here you definitely level up quickly and by the midway point of the game I'd consider myself overpowered. That all said though, look if combat's not your thing and you just want narrative or say you want to revisit an area and explore then it has two fantastic options in here. You can actually pause and turn up the frequency of random battles to level up quicker or even off entirely. You can also then jump into the options further and have access to an attack that kills enemies instantly. It's quite a nice setup honestly as it leads to a level of challenge that anybody can face. 
Set up then for Noah is a little more complex but manageable. We will be dealing with what the game refers to as a cyber deck. This contains not only the items we collect but abilities we can execute, software and hardware. Some of these are rewarded with progression, others are found in chests around the world. Many for me were purchased in stores as you're constantly finding or earning extra cash. So think here, everything from new attacks to defensive measures to consistent buffers, my favorite being a counter, which returned a blow every single time I was hit automatically without costing a turn. This was particularly useful to build up that jack meter. The turns then are dictated in battle in the top right of the screen, and you can even stall by defending, meaning you'll find yourself now with two attacks in a row. It's worth knowing as well then, software requires a RAM spots which you will open up with progression and the same thing goes for the hardware which a permanent character changes. You actually get free spots for this, but not all of them are unlocked immediately. You'll spend a lot of time in these menus though setting up by the location because they each have a type so to speak. So think water enemies and electricity enemies. So think very much in line with something I know akin to like Pokemon. Basically though, you'll want to build the best deck possible and the location is often the clue. For example, you're traversing the local river, it sees a bigger spike in water reliant enemies. On enemies though, that would be my main complaint with combat, I wish there was just a little more in variety. It's a game that goes with a different colour skin to differentiate your foes and I feel like everything else here is so creative that it somewhat kind of stood out to me as a shortcut taken. Definitely not a major issue, but it is an observation. The world then is also smaller, but there's no real map in here, or at least not from what I found and I reached the end game. I was searching the stores initially, but nothing really indicated it would give me an idea. They are at least easy to work your way through the locations though, and they have some minor environmental puzzles as well. Just wanted to point that out though, because I know it may frustrate some. My only other issues, I did have a single hard crash just prior to the final boss of the game, but no problems at loading back in as it saves frequently. For some though, that may be a negative because there's actually a loading and saving screen between every single room and battle. These are no more than a few seconds, but it is constant throughout and some may grow tired of it, you know, popping up on screen. Overall for gameplay though, look honestly I played it in three sittings, sure it's bite sized but it was actually quite refreshing for the genre, there was no padding and it's held up by a small but interesting world, you know, population and a combat system that I felt was definitely engaging. Graphically then I really like what they went with here, a top down pixel like design but battles, they lean into that 3D kind of, you know, vibe. It gives me an air of almost think Mario RPG at times which I know is quite the stretch but there was something that likened it to it for me. The animations are great though from simple exploration to in combat where we bust out some you know seriously over the top and flashy moves like the title of Jack moves. The one thing I will say about them though they are canned animations these and when you combine the short quick time event that takes place with the animation towards the end game I did find they started to outstay their welcome and maybe a quick skip option would have been a nice feature. The world finally, it's smaller but well designed, we've got a suitably cyberpunk look but think less almost futuristic and more, you know, say downtrodden with areas dedicated to rivers, secret labs, scrapyards. Occasionally the 2D design, it can make spotting pathways and areas slightly difficult but nothing major and, you know, simply a byproduct of the style. Audio finally it's decent, there's no voice acting and the effects are simplistic but what you would expect in combat with each character packing something that's just a little unique. Really like the music as well, there's just if anything not enough of it. The game sticks to themes with the music and I wish it had maybe evolved just a little bit more because what is here it is really good, it just gets repetitive towards the end game again and I think they could have definitely you know, gone with something maybe a little different as our character goes through these different ranges of emotion. So for all a Jack move is a really fun short cyberpunk JRPG. I've been hard on it today in some areas, but that's mainly because I really like it. I see some small areas which could have elevated it even further. Even the short nature of the game as well, that is fine. In fact, it's refreshing for the genre to have something that just skips the padding and gets to the point. The combat is fun though, it looks great, I enjoyed the world and the narrative. And look sure it can confuse itself in moments, but I thought the themes overall were just spot on. With all of that in mind, it's a great 8 out of 10 from me today and I really hope we get to see more of this world 
because he absolutely deserves it. I had an absolute blast with it. And yeah, I'm really hoping now to see it further down the line. Will you be picking this one up then or will you hold on to that cash? Let me know in the comments down below. With that then, like it, subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.